go over to the bee dart which is a cavern cavern specialty let's see let me see if i can remember it Revealing area. is that it hey i got it so that dart lands here and scans absolutely everybody back pillar and you just drone out and clear back sight and you are being chilling you can push defense if you want to defend main throw a wall here make sure it covers the mid cross and i use this orb for holding main you just aim there and you left click bounces off the ceiling lands right there easy peasy one way i'm putting this arrow on the tip of that building right there it lands on this roof where it can't be broken it'll also tag any any pecking evildoer who dares try walk elbow okay so it lands up here there's nothing they can do about it can't break it all right now we've got the really goofy one this is the post plant a main one way this one's super goofy and it's actually really easy to throw it just works when i first saw this i was like huh but you literally just stand and aim right here and you just throw it. Cage triggered. And it like, I aim too high. Sorry. There we go. Cage triggered. And it just works. I'm one way. Like, what the hell? Hello, gamers. Look at your elo. Now look at mine. Now back to your elo. Now back to mine. Sadly, it isn't mine. But if you stop autopiloting outdated strategies and start getting free VOD review coaching, it could look like it's mine. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on bind. With the strats your strats could be like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's the Valorant gift card from Woohoojin. For your successful follow up thought. Look again. The gift card is now an ego vandal. Anything is possible when you get your Valorant tips from a talking banana and not TikTok. I'm on a gaming chair. Time to talk Breeze, chat. It's time to talk Breeze. Before I showcase all the fun tech, and trust me, we got, we got a lot of fun tech to go over. First, we need to talk about the mini game. This is, this is just a word I use for different maps. Um, I'm going to use Haven as our example here. The mini game on Haven, as you know, is the attackers wish to attack a site with one or zero defenders. And the reason why that's so prominent on this map is because there's three bomb sites and the defenders can't possibly have two on all of them because that would be six defenders. So that makes sense on Haven, although it's not the mini game on Lotus. So I digress. It's not just because there's three sites. But anyways, this is the one we're all familiar with. So I'm using it as the example. Every map has its own set of win conditions and play styles. And once you understand what those are, it makes it easier to think about the map. Because on Haven, it becomes pretty explanatory as to why you don't want a five stack push A every round. Because you give up control on the C side of the map. And if you happen to push into two or three people, you can't cancel the hit and you've lost the mini game. It's why fakes are really good on this map. Slow play is really good. Breaking Sentinel utility and garage to make them rotate is really good. It all makes sense. So what? mini game on breeze so it hasn't changed much even though there used to be a corridor here the map is still played very similarly the thing you need to notice about this map is the main entry points on the sites are really 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 wide open awkward chokes okay you've probably come out of b main or a main before a million times and just died to so much shit there's so much to worry about coming out of these chokes dudes here dudes tucked here Dudes here, dudes there, dudes there, dudes here, dudes here, dudes there, dudes there, dudes up here, dudes spamming you. It's gross. And the same thing on B, okay? These chokes suck for the attackers to push through. They suck so much that like five stacking through these chokes is really, really, really low conversion. Like the Viper will instant molly here on defense. He can't come out. Somebody will be close right. Somebody will close left. Somebody else will know the jump to get up here. Whatever, it sucks. Okay, the idea is defenders on Breeze. We're going to think from their POV because the, the opposite of whatever one side wants to do is what the other side wants to do. So it's easier to explain from defense POV is they pick agents that are very good at locking down these chokes. And then they take strong, strong skirmishers that are capable of gathering info and setting each other up for success and fight for this um, middle area. And the idea is like maybe we'll put an operator in Jet's hands and we'll lock down mid because the idea is if mid is locked down well then they have to push through these awkward chokes okay 
Does that make sense? So the defense is constantly trying to pressure the attack into feeling like their only valid way to push through is five stack A main or five stack B main. If the defense succeeds in doing that, they have a huge advantage in terms of round conversion. So the attackers want to do the complete opposite. On attack, if we move all these agents now over to attack, they wish to establish some level of mid control, yes, Tasaboto, to essentially threaten that they can hit a site simultaneously from two routes. It's like pretty much paramount on this map. I'm going to compare it to Ascent, where on Ascent, it's important to split sites. However, you can get away with 5A main on Ascent. Like PRX did it all the time. Same with B main. Like if you really run it down, you can get through on Ascent. But splitting is more appropriate most of the time. On Breeze, running it down five stacked is almost never justifiable. Um, pretty much never. If you're going to five stack something, usually it's going to be like a death ball up elbow or something tricky and you contact explode B this way. That would be way more effective because all of their annoying utility is positioned for this annoying choke. Got it? So that's the map. It's very simple. You put these strong util agents, Cypher and Viper, you have them hold these chokes and then you get an operator in Jet's hands and you set her up for success. And the enemy's team, their goal is to deny that success. And now... I hope a lot of this tech is going to make sense. When I show you KO and Sova tech, it's going to mostly be focused around taking this space and gathering information about that. When I show you Cypher and Viper tech, it's mostly going to be about controlling this space because that's their job on this map. I've chosen to only show tech on what I feel are the strongest agents in their roles for this map. Uh, no duelist tech. Sorry, duelist. But we've got Recon Initiator Sova. We've got Flash Initiator KO. However, um, Sky is totally fine, but she doesn't require much prep. We got Viper on controller, like solo controller is pretty much unarguable. And I hope this makes sense. Like if you're thinking about Harbor now, do you realize why he's not the best? Because he isn't capable of stalling a choke on his own. And that's the map win condition. Is it easier to understand why Harbor now is considered weaker as a solo controller? Because I know a lot of people will be like, oh, but his wall is so good for the attack. It is, it is, but he's incapable of performing the job of controller on defense okay so back to the sentinels finally cypher as the sentinel okay so these are the agents i've chosen to teach you it also makes retakes easier not the win condition on this map not the win condition split uh very retake heavy harbor is a lot more justifiable as a solo controller on split okay but this is breeze breeze is all about trying to get kills on your operator you don't want to play retake with an operator odd toaster you're thinking backwards I've reached out to some of the best players of each of these agents. I've worked with them to create a short list of tech that I think if you learn, you will be a giga demon on these agents in solo queue, like a super duper giga demon. I did all the homework for you. So like if you're a fade one trick or whatever, humor me, humor me. You don't have to learn anything or you don't have to do your own research. Play Sova. I'm going to convince you to play Sova. Okay, that's my my goal. We're going to start with Sova. And we're actually gonna start with defense, okay? I worked with Cavern on these lineups. If you're familiar with Cavern, he's a tier two level player. Um, he's actually playing in my Sunset Tournament with the entire roster of Moisex Shopify as his teammates. And we're gonna start defense. And he specifically left. likes to play Three, fast three. rotate. Stay he plays in this area. Right here. And he'll go bridge or nest depending on what the team needs. Cause he's not Cypher, he's not Viper. He wants to fight for mid. What do Cypher and Viper want on their sites? We're gonna start with supporting the chokes. It's very common when it gets pushed A that you want a Sova Dart to land way up here because it's hard for them to break it as they come out. That makes sense. And similarly on B, you want a Dart that lands high up above the choke if they're flooding out B. We, al we always need to be able to satisfy this condition that it's impossible for them to come out. So how can we have both of these darts while we're playing in this region? Well, lineups. So for B, we got a lineup over here. I'll teach you how to throw them, don't worry. Let me see if I can throw it first though. See if I can first try. There's the B dart, as I just threw it from nest. And the A dart is just right over here from bridge. I will, I'll will. i teach you how to throw them after I demo them. And there's the A dart. Bingo. So now you can see why playing fast rotate on Sova is so incredibly powerful on this map. Because you can get those darts out against either sight rush. You could start the round right here. Your teammate says it's an A rush. And bam. Done. Your teammate says it's a B rush. Bam. Done. Okay. That's why Sova's better than Fade on this map. You want to know how to throw those lineups? They're right here. B recon from Nest. A recon from Bridge. I will be sharing this document with you 
after the guide it'll also be in the description but you just click on it and bam all right my number one most used dart on defense is for sure the wind or the nest window whatever you call this dart is you come here with your back along the wall and you see this little brick sticking out you don't even got to peek a wide you just got to see the brick aim like about in the center of it and dart and it will double bounce come over the top and land right above bam okay i will be sharing all of these with you as we go through uh this document you'll get access to okay yeah we went above and beyond chat i've got connections now i've got connections okay so now defense there's only two other pieces of tech i tried to i told my tech masters to keep it at most five pieces of tech per map this is still defense of course five pieces per half and cavern decided it was most appropriate to show his favorite shocks on this map they're both thrown from the same spot. You come over here and you just want to barely see the yellow. How finicky are these? Not finicky. That's why I'm demonstrating them. Uh, they are finicky like until you learn them, I guess I should say. Like I can hit this recon every time, if that's what you're asking. It's right here. Revealing area. Um, I, I didn't I wouldn't allow a lineup that I couldn't throw to be in the uh the tech. Let's look at the shocks. So he's got a shock for right here. That plant right and that here. plant. Because those are the two plants. And specifically they come from over here so that they look like they're coming from mid. You'll see when I throw the shock, shock it actually shock. bounces around that way to shock site. So the audio and Cavern was explaining these to me. The audio from the planters POV is as if the shock is coming from mid. They just hear the shock come in this shock way. Dark. Okay. And so when you throw that shock. It is most appropriate for you to quickly route this way around because they will expect you to be right over here. here. So keep that in mind. That's one of them. And the other one is the same like lineup, but it has two bounces and it's like a bit higher, I think. Is it here? Yes, it lands over here. The These are both in the dock. You can go learn them from the dock. Now let's talk attack. What does Sova want to do on attack chat? Explain it to me. Recon initiator mains in chat. What do we need to do on attack if we want to win on this map? Push away the op. Yeah. Yeah, we got pressure mid. Pressure mid. Pressure mid. Okay, so first, I'm going to paint the picture. There's a common play where the opera will start tunnel, and they'll come over here and try to fight elbow like this, and they will have like a teammate nest or tunnel or whatever waiting to like break a dart for them. Okay, so that's the picture. I hope I've painted it sufficiently for this dart, which Cavern has so lovingly shared with us. Standing ahead. This dart, I actually threw it a bit wrong. Uh, we'll go watch the cavern video. It lands Standing right ahead. here. You'll notice that that scans the person walking elbow, but it's not it's breakable. Teammates can't break that dart for them. So it tags the opper pushing elbow for sure. If they're pushing, throw it immediately on barrier drop. Generally, yes, but I'm mostly showing you tech here. You're going to have to learn when it's best to use this stuff. I'm basically equipping you with a rocket launcher. You will have to learn how and when to fire it. There we go. That's much more appropriate. Lands nice and low. So that annoying cringe duelist player with no prep who walks elbow to peek and fight. Revealed. Easy peasy. Not a problem. So now we've got a tool to deal with. I'm sorry, spawns. I know spawns is in chat. Are you guys familiar with the unbreakable cipher trip on B? They put it on like this stair. It comes across and you can't break it. You can't. You you peek out and you get tagged by it. Well, good thing. Uh, good thing we got cavern on speed dial, right, chat? Trick shot. <laughs> Sorry, spawn. Sorry, spawn. Everyone who watches this video is going to be a demon on breeze. It's all I can say. Okay, so cavern really wanted to highlight that shock. And now we have a recon for either sight hit. Okay, and I'm going to start with the A recon because I'm going to take some props for this one. Cavern told me that this A recon should exist, but he didn't know how to throw it. And so I found it. And this A recon is very powerful. Like this, you should pretty much always use this on your A hits if you're playing Sova. You're going to come to the tip here, this rock. Okay. And now do you see this tip here? You're going to put the dot of your C of the drone on that one bounce max charge. And what you do is when you throw that dart, you run up here and you drone out and you clear close, right? And what happens is while you're droning, this dart is falling, 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 falling. And bam, it lands back yellow right here as you're droning right side. So anybody defending A 
will either get tagged by the dart or tagged by your drone and your team can flood out with that info so if you're facing like an enemy viper who's holding a suboptimally and they're failing to perform like the win condition of the map of locking down this choke you can just launch that dart this scans the cubby next to crab right yes so that's the a dart you combo with the drone and now let's go over to the b dart which is a cavern cavern specialty let's see let me see if i can remember it Revealing area. is that it Hey, I got it. So that dart lands here and scans absolutely everybody back pillar and you just drone out and clear back sight and you are being chilling. You can push uh, that. Both of these darts, of course, are in the sheet that I'll be sharing with you. All right, Sovas, that's all you need to learn. Learn those darts and those shocks. Everything else you can wing. Now, I do have some honorable mentions for Sovas. When you're in the B post plant and they're flooding out, you want to shoot against this wall. However, if you shoot into these leaves... It's very hard for them to break that dart because it's hard for them to see. So that's really good in post plant while the enemy team's flooding out. Notice up there. Very good. Um, additionally, same thing can happen with these leaves. They're coming out McDonald's. You can hide the dart in these leaves. So when they're coming out, that's specifically B post plant. Are those visible with low graphics? Good question. I'm going to guess yes, given Cavern told me about those. <laughs> yeah, they're right there. Those are there. Those leaves don't go anywhere. It's Viper time. Now, a lot of you probably know, if you've been here before, you know a lot of these Viper lineups because um, I'm a heckin' controller player. So first, we're going to start with the fact that there's two different orbs that I like to throw. I like to orb nest and I like to orb mid. Like this mid cross. I don't like to have to burn my wall for this mid cross if I don't have to. So ideally, I have an orb for it. And conveniently, I've got an orb for both of them. And you can throw it or an orb for here from both both sides so let's start with our mid orb from b jog our own memory okay to that corner the lowest leaf that sticks out the arrow it's just a throw you know me i don't like jump throws chat there are some jump throws but only when it's completely necessary so we find the leaf that's sticking the lowest down it's right there with the arrow at it you throw Whoa-bam. Whoa-bam. And specifically, I made sure that this orb lands deep because it's to threaten mid to A. But any Icebox fans will know that it's fun to peek through your orb sometimes. And you like to have a little uh, comfort coming through with it. So we got that orb from this side. And then we have the same exact orb, but thrown from uh, mid right here. And you'll see it follows a very similar trajectory. We're lining up that part of the HUD with the flag. So I specifically have this one arch over. So that way it, it's hard to tell if you threw it from B or not. And it lands in the same spot. Like the same spot. There's an easier version of that orb? I know. I want my orb to follow the same trajectory. <laughs> Onto the nest orbs. There's two of them in here. We'll go pretty quickly. The fun one. We we wait, Was this a Xander VOD chat? I forget. But we found this one. It's a shift walk throw lineup for Ness from mid. And then we found we've got one from uh, Cannon included. So when your teammates are scaling up mid with, for example, a Sova Recon that might land right here and a KO knife to be shown soon, you can pop this orb so that your teammates can peek out and safely fight tunnel without having to worry about this Ness guy. And finally, I'm not showing any of the default shit. So like in here, like, you know about B wall, you know about an A wall. So I'm showing the mid to A wall. That's a bit fancy. I'm going to explain this because it's a bit tricky. So there's this corner here out mid doors and you need the left part of your wall to touch it like that. The left part. You're not aiming at the corner. You're aiming the left part of your wall to touch it. And you throw it. You need to aim pretty high. And this wall looks like a normal mid to A wall, except it also blocks the jump up. So it allows you to threaten that you've come up here. You can throw this mid to A wall pre-round. So before the barriers even drop, then you can walk over here and you can really f shit up with mid control because you can prepare to throw this orb. So you'll have that wall in place and then you'll throw this orb. You can like wall up, fight this guy, come over here. Look at me, I'm bad. And then you can orb up, wall down and fight tunnel like this with like a recon and scale up. That's Viper attack. Uh, don't mind... Of course, there's the A wall, the normal A wall, the normal B wall. Not going to show those. You know how to throw those. I'm not going to show like the basic post plant mollies 
You can easily look those up, but I don't even recommend playing for lineups that often. I mostly use my uh, mollies to attack the enemies as they're coming out onto site, just throwing them wherever I see fit. We're going to go into defense. I've got multiple setups for defense. Once, two setups for either site, and then a setup for mid. Um, most of the time, Viper will be holding one of the chokes, as I explained when I was talking about uh, the defense win conditions. I've included one gimmicky wall that you can use, specifically when you're on an eco round. So the barrier comes here. So keep in mind that this wall requires you to actually come past the barrier. This is an eco round only play. And what I do for this wall is I line up this thingy, corners of the stones, and I throw it. And then I'm immediately moving. And if they're pushing A, I'll put the wall up. And the point of this gimmick wall is you can essentially play like in this spot and drop the wall and fight them like from this weird funny off angle. Or you can play over here and fight them walking up mid from this weird off angle. It's a gimmick eco play. I've included it because I've, I've found in my games that it's actually very effective against um, lazy attack. Now onto the normal setups. We've got defense if you want to defend main. Throw a wall here. Make sure it covers the mid cross. And I use this orb for holding main. You just aim there and you left click. Bounces off the ceiling, lands right there. Easy peasy one way. And why do we want a one way when normally one ways are considered too passive in Valorant? We want them because on Breeze, the only thing that matters is the attackers don't want to push main. They don't want to push main. They want to push mid. It's the mini game. Exactly Kaiser Impact. One ways are way, way, way more acceptable on Breeze against teams that are rushing A main. So that's why I'm including a one way in this setup. However, we have another setup on A that does not use that one way in the event that you're facing a team that, you know, has some brain cells. But that, you know, is solo queue. So here's the other A setup. It's the same wall. And then instead, it is a one way for mid. Why are one ways bad on other maps? They're generally too passive. They're not bad. A lot of the time, one ways are good. But I see people overusing them on other maps to stall when they don't need to be stalling. Like you'll have three people on your site and for whatever reason, you'll throw a one way to stop the enemy team from pushing you, even though you got three people, you know? So it's not that they're bad always. It's that on Breeze, they're almost always good. Okay. On Breeze, stalling is quite strong. All right, we got this orb and this wall, I guess, potential A splits. And this is very powerful because usually your operator, like you'll use this orb if your operator's on the B side of the map. So you're trying to incentivize the enemy team to push into your operator, okay? That's like your whole job on defense as Viper is make the enemy team peak your operator. And then if your operator doesn't kill them, tough. If they push your setup, you better kill them. All right, B setup. I throw a wall for the mid cross, come over here an orb for main simple enough i aim at those leaves you throw it it lands flush and then you play b however you see fit usually in this back side back pillar area and you just lock that down with your mollies to stall to get your team rotating over and be set up if you're fighting for mid with your team very similar I'm lining up this part of the hud with that bit on the ground and this is an orb that lands in the same spot b main So that way you can fight for mid instead, but with the same orb. And the reason why I'm not throwing the orb before the round begins is because the barrier is actually pretty far back. And it, it's not the best to have the orb against the barrier. Because the barrier is like here. If you have the orb way up here, it actually gives the enemy team a bit more flexibility in attacking the site. So I like to use the lineup to throw the orb a bit deeper. Easy peasy. All right. That's all the tech I show in the slide deck for Viper. It's all orbs and all walls. Mollies on defense, you're frequently using them to fight against teams that are pushing you. And if they're not pushing you, you use them on the retake. On A retake, I like here. to try and land mollies this region here. A B retake, I like to land them in these regions over here. There are lineups for those. You can learn lineups for those. It's not necessary. Okay. But like if you're gonna learn lineups for these mollies on the retake, more power to you. They're quite useful, but not useful enough for me to include them in the guide. We take Molly's. We're going to do KO next. All right, KO, we've got tech. You guys want to start attack or defense? We'll let Penflash choose because Penflash seems excited for KO. Attack? All right, let's start with the tunnel knife from elbow. So this is when your team is fighting up mid and there's a potential tunnel player. I'm putting this arrow on the tip of that building right there. And it lands on this roof where it can't be broken. It'll also tag any 
any pecking evildoer who dares try walk elbow. Okay? If it lands up here, there's nothing they can do about it. Can't break it. There's a knife for beat back sight. This one's fake and on certified. Go to the pillar and it's the hecking. It's the part where you see daylight. That's where the flash fan goes. Like up the window a bit till it touches daylight. You see? Can't trust anything this banana tries to give me, bro. My bad. My bad. My bad. The lineup was a bit off. There we go. It lands behind this wall. So this guy over here can't break it if they're playing in this angle. Mid doors flash. So this is at the barrier, roughly. I'm starting here. And you aim at this tip here. And it's a run throw. Okay, it's not a standstill throw. And it pops right here. That's right here. So if their um, opera likes to peek mid doors, you throw this flash, have your duelist dash up or satchel up, TP, whatever the hell they do on their duelist agent. And you can pressure that operator back. Get the pick, maybe you run B, whatever. It lets you fight for mid control. Get a knife for A site. Okay. Into this corner. And then you're aiming at this bit of this pipe. This bit of the HUD. You just left click. knife will come in and it's going to land in the middle here where it'll tag anybody playing um, on this side of the thing. And importantly, if they're playing like back here, they can't easily look over and break the dart because the knife lands inside over here. So if they're anywhere on this side of crab, they, they can't break the dart. They're back here. Similarly, if they're playing over here, same problem. They'll have to peek too deep to break it. Then we got a flash for a sight to finish things off. This flash specifically, I actually reworked this one a bit. So it starts on the left because players like to PK main now. I think it's better to start on the left than on the right. So that way you are deeper than your allies. You just count. It's like the second line up and you go up to this, I don't know, this pipe. And it's just a left click. And it just goes right over. All right, we're on a defense. Defense is very straightforward on this agent. Um, most KO players are probably already familiar with this knife right here. It's not even in the guide, but you're probably all familiar with this thing. You throw it, it lands elbow real fast, tags them. Problem is everyone's familiar with that. And so teams will start dodging it. And so once they start dodging it, you use this one here, the right corner. It's the same knife, covers the same shit, but it lands significantly slower. So the B players who think they're dodging the knife, they're like, huh, no knife this round. And they walk up and then the knife lands and they get tagged. And the reason why it's nice to have a slow one is because you don't want to just stand here and like wait because they can push up mid. So you actually you do want to throw it still. Um, and this is very similar to the fracture knife a main, if you recall that one. So it's just a slower knife to mess up their timing. And you can wait a bit to throw this one. You can throw it and then you can be on your merry way. You can go up towards nest to fight for mid with your team. Throw a sort of round? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can delay it by a couple seconds, though. Like, every game is dynamic, you know? A main flash. You guys have seen this one. I actually yoinked this one from Asuna. So, this is if your, like, operator wants to mix it up. The enemy team, I don't know, maybe they predictably have a lurker taking space too aggressively in A main. You can just huck this flash for them right here. And it'll land behind their peak. It pops right here on the penguin. You'll notice it pops quite low and flashes everybody along this line. But your teammates in front of the flash so they can peek out. No problem. We got an elbow flash as well from Nest for your devious operator player who dares walk elbow. This one, you literally just aim right there loosely. Like I sort of like considered not even putting this one in, but it's like important enough that you have to know like effectively to the left of this box and like up here, man. And it pops elbow. <laughs> you have to tell your teammates to play anti mid knife from nest. This one's also the Asana video. Well, Fake Anana has also showed me the same knife, confirming its validity. You're effectively landing the knife against this wall over here where the attackers can't break it. They don't have time. 
and it'll tell you if anybody's pushing up mid. Got it. Helps you with play the mini game. Whereas you play KO on Breeze on defense, mid. Everyone who's not Viper and Cypher fights for mid on this map. And they will play like fast rotate to help the other sites most of the time. Most of the time. So KO will find themselves in either of these spots, nest or like doors, depending on where your op wants to play or your duelist wants to play. Like let's say your duelist wants to fight out mid. Well, then maybe you want to be nest to throw them the knife. Or let's say your duelist hecking wants to walk down elbow and um, you just need to get recon. Then maybe you'll play doors to throw this recon or maybe you'll play nest to throw them a flash. You know, it, it really does depend. But the idea is you're trying to support your duelist and take space in this middle area or fight for it aggressively. Then we got a flash B main. Corner of that panel. Aim at that corner. Left click. Pops right here. Notice it pops around the corner. So your teammate who's close to the corner peeking this way doesn't get tagged. Easy peasy. If you're going to throw this flash, it's recommended you immediately peek out towards window Flashback. this way. Because your uh, teammate's going to be peeking B main there. along this line, and you're going to want to fight the window for them. Attacker's supposed to split 2 3 mid. The attackers are supposed to attack what's weak about the defense. I'm showing you lots of strong shit on defense. You will not face this in solo queue. I need you to understand. You're not going to face five dudes who are all doing this. Okay? Not until Radiant. Like, high Radiant. If you think you faced a team that was doing this, prove it. Drop a VOD. Because no, you didn't. You did not. You're going to attack the weaknesses of the enemy defense. That's how you play this game. You're going to notice that their Cypher player, heck in doesn't throw his trip be main or whatever or whatever pushing mains isn't bad sushi it's the defense wants to control the chokes and so the attack frequently struggles to push through them because the defense is allocating significant resources to it that makes sense pushing main is not bad pushing main is bad against a team that's allocating resources towards defending main nothing is bad in isolation cypher cypher we got hacking nerd tech from spawns himself we've got two a setups three B setups. We're going to start with defense. Look at the A setup for if you're playing crab. He shows more than two trips per setup. I'd like to emphasize that. Mix it up. Can't on that box. Nice and easy. So you notice he's going to show more than two trips. <laughs> then we got our cage. Cage triggered. Easy. I I already feel like I'm unpushable. I don't know about you, but now let's say you're getting pushable. Well, good thing we got another setup. There we go. A different cam. A different cage. Wait, this is the same one? Or is the same trip? <laughs> yes, this should do. All right, he likes the same trips. A slightly different trip on the left, though. He's not playing here. Ooh, and he's got an extra one. Ooh. That's tricky. That's tricky. To he crouch peeks up. Cringe. <laughs> so you can crouch peek up. Yeah. So you wait for them to scale up or whatever, and you can peek out from inside of your cage. Yeah, because you're not looking here, right? You'll start looking this way, scaling up, and then Cypher just jumps up. <laughs> Specific trip after spawn barrier can't be heard by attackers. That is a good note. That would be this one, right? So you throw it right here the moment the uh, round begins, and they can't hear it. Let's look at our B setups. There's that trip, which is super breakable. With a simple sofa dart. <laughs> oh, you guys want to know how to jump up there? I learned. I learned how. Okay, line up with that center. Okay, D and then A and you hold W the whole time. Whoa! Oh! I want to see what this cage is for. This goofy one he threw up on that wall. Is that a one-way while they're scaling out? Oh. Can they... 
They can't jump up on this side, can they? Oh, they can, though. But who cares? You kill them if they jump up. Because they have no accuracy. Sheesh! That cage is sick! Once again, here's the setup. The very breakable Cypher Trip. All you need to learn is a Sova lineup that we showed in this in this video. Cage for B, and then he's got this cage. Ooh, that's fancy. God, it's not even hard. First try. Cage triggered. First try. That's the setup if he's playing back sight. He uses that one way. Here's the setup if he's playing close. Same camera. Ooh, a trip on the right. Trip on the left. Ooh, we play here. Ah, you spray through the cage when the trip pops and you play in the cage. I like it. And we're gonna we're gonna finish right on an hour. The jump isn't tournament legal. Why? It is practically bug abuse. But it's solo queue legal bug abuse. Didn't know Cypher had four trips. <laughs> he shows variations of trips for each setup send a car. All right, all right. We've been through all of his setups. Now we got to go to mid or attack. I'm quickly showcasing all of the tech. We're finishing up. He's got a cage for elbow. All of these videos will be shared with you. You'll easily be able to reference all of them. Easy cage for nest. This mid camera is actually crazy. I learned this one right after I, I saw it. This camera is actually crazy. It sees all of nest. And it sees mid doors. A run throw for the cross. All right, now we've got the really goofy one. This is the post plant, a main one way. This one's super goofy. And it's actually really easy to throw. It just works. When I first saw this, I was like, huh? But you literally just stand and aim right here and you just throw it. Cage triggered. And it like, I aim too high, sorry. There we go. Cage triggered. And it just works. I'm one way. Like, what the hell? What the hell? All right, and then the post plant cage on B. More nerd tech. Cage triggered. <laughs> Cypher mains are eating good. Cypher mains are eating good. <laughs> um, I would suggest you you consider comboing this one on Odin rounds too, because if you have an Odin. Um, you can actually just spray through the window wall too, right here. This wall is pen only by high pen guns. Medium penetration cannot go through this wall. That's all of the Asian specific tech. I'm sorry it took so long, but also you're welcome that it took so long. Because <laughs> I got a lot of tech for you guys for this. Emphasis on please don't one trick an agent, one trick a roll. I've got prep here for all the best agents in each roll. Learn it, bring it to your games. Let's quickly talk post plants. In post plants, the one thing you want to avoid doing is giving long range dry fights. So doing this in post plant is pretty weak. You generally want to coordinate with your teammates to punish the enemy team as they're coming out. Let me, let me try and phrase this from the retaker's POV. If you're the B retaker here, you want to fight the guy ladder. You want to fight the guy up here. What you don't want is you don't want to come out here and see nobody. Because once you're out in the open and you've seen nobody, you're overexposed. Does that make sense? So ideally, you want to work with your team to somehow get info once the enemy team's out. So for example, if somebody's holding this line, they take a shot and they tuck. Now you know they're out. Okay. And now that you know they're out, well, your Silva throws his recon. And now you all swing and you fight. And it's gaming time. So try to avoid giving this fight, this fight this fight this fight try to avoid doing this it's very easy to fall into this habit while playing breeze because it's so open but at the end of the day these fights are not good for your post plant 
goblin conversion. Like, don't give this fight. Don't go hunting these fights. You want them to come out. 